there, I'm Lori Ditto. Welcome to Make Today Count. And in today's episodes, I'm gonna share about going three times to see the stables. You know, eternity is coming. You want to make sure that today counts for that day up ahead. Let me start with a couple scriptures. In Luke 21, 19, it says, by continuing to have faith, you will save your life. And in another version, it says, stand firm and you will win life. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, don't grow weary for at the right time, you will reap a blessing if you don't give up. You can't quit. <laughs> you know, the enemy is after us. He's trying to get you to waste your time. And, and I have done that way too much in my Christian life, wasting time. You know, the things that waste my time is um, social media. Um, I know other people, what waste their time is TV. Even talking on the phone with somebody that you love. There's a lot of ways to waste time. Did you get enough of Jesus in you today to be able to help you tomorrow and the next days to accomplish his perfect will in your life? It's really important. That's one of the ways. A few others. The enemy tries to get you to waste your energy because if you only have so many steps you can do in a day, he wants you to waste them. He wants you to waste your money. I mean, oh my goodness, fashion changes all the time. It's easy to lose money. He doesn't want you to spend your time praying. That's a big deal. How much prayer do you get in your life every day? Don't waste that time. The enemy wants you to use your own mouth to curse. And maybe you don't think you curse others, but if you curse yourself, oh my goodness, we say things like, you know, I'm not very smart. I'm never gonna achieve that. Stop, stop letting the enemy convince you to do those kinds of things. The enemy wants to waste your time so that you don't have any time to worship. And you know, when you worship, oh, when I worship God, things happen that build me up. You need to spend time worshiping God. And we need to work on our beliefs what do I believe about God? And get rid of our unbelief. All this is necessary so that we're ready. And God wants us ready. And he's doing everything he can to give us a walk of faith. A walk that will help us achieve what it is he has for us to do. You know, I remember a time I had just started Bible college. And while I was there, um, a friend of mine called and we pray together. We pray for her husband's salvation. And on this particular day, while we were praying, she said to me, she said, Lori, is there anything that I can pray for you? And I've been studying this. And I said, yes, I need you to pray because I'm losing. She said, what are you losing? Let's go to Mark. 418. Now these are the ones sown among thorns and they're the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. That's what was happening to me and I knew it. So what had happened was we took our car in to get an oil change. And when we got my oil changed, the man said, your next oil change is going to run you about $900. I said, what? Why? He said, your car is a rust bucket and you're going to have to replace a whole lot of things on your next oil change. I was like, oh my gosh. And you know what? I couldn't think of anything else. Here I am. I'm in Bible college. I get to learn about God, but because I'm so worried, I'm worried, worried, right? And so I told her, please pray for me because this is happening in my life 
because of the cares of this world, because of problems with riches, I'm really stressed. So she said, I'll pray. Later that day, she calls me up and she says, hey, I'm going to send you some money to go get a new car. And I was like, wow, God's going to take care of this problem just like that. So I prayed to him. I said, Lord, what kind of car am I going to get? He said, you're going to get a white one. It's going to be like it's new and it will still have the plastic in it. So I tell Mike, it happens to be our 25th wedding anniversary. I say, hey, this is what kind of car God has for us. And we had $5,000 to go get this car. So we show up at the used car lot, right? And the guy there, he says to me, he says, um, what kind of car do you want? I said, a white one. He's like, well, how much money? I, 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 I just want to see the white cars. And so he says, we have two. Mike and I went out and looked at them. These were not something that you could consider would be new. So I came back and he goes, can I show you? I said, no, I just need a white car. So he punches in white again and a new car, white car is on the lot. And so we go out and look at it. And this car has very, very low miles, which was nice. And it still had the plastic in the back seat and in the trunk, just like the Lord said. The man rings up the car. He says it will be $5,000, $5,100 something dollars. I said, no, I'm sorry. Your math is incorrect. You have to go and fix it. Mike's like, wow, you did that math fast in your head. I said, oh, I didn't do the math. God only gave me $5,000. So he wouldn't have me spend more than what he gave me. The man comes back and he says, oh, we're sorry. There was a mistake. It's only $4,975, which left us $25 on our 25th wedding anniversary. Now, why is this important? Just understand that God, he has a walk for you and a walk for me. And, and it's going to take a lot of faith to believe what it is that he's showing you. So he gives us all these little tests, trials, things to get us ready. There you go. Now, I want to jump in about these three visits to heaven to see the stables. Now, the first time that I went to heaven to see the stables, I didn't realize I was going to see the stables. I got there. My angel was there. The Lord was there. And there were little animals running all over the little dogs. And these little puppies were jumping up in Jesus arm. He loves his creation. So he nuzzles them and he puts them down. And then all of a sudden, this little white dog jumps up into my arms. And I was like, oh, hello. And, and the little dog says to me, I love you. I was like, you love me. Who are you? And the little dog says to me, I'm your snowball. You see, I had this little dog snowball when I was a child. But my brother was allergic. So we had to give the dog to my aunt. And my little dog didn't know you can't run in the road. And it, it got killed. There it was in heaven. And that's when I understood if you love and care for a pet, that pet goes to heaven. That's really important that we know that. So you can't just be generic. I love dolphins. And so all dolphins are going to go to heaven. If you love it and take care of it, that pet can go to heaven. Now, there are pets in heaven, but their owners are not in heaven. That's important to know because there's only one way for people to get to heaven. That is, you must have Jesus Christ as your savior. And if Jesus is your savior, then you can go to heaven. And if Jesus is your savior, then you will love and take care of your pets. But that's when we both looked and there was the stable. And when we come back, I can't wait to tell you about the horses in the stable. See you soon. Welcome back. Let's just jump right in. So when I saw the stables, it doesn't look anything like a stable on earth. It had a big round disc with a few um, posts that came down. You see, we don't lock up anything in heaven. 
and there are more horses in heaven than what you would realize. There's an, there's an army in heaven and they ride horses. And, and so the stable, the horses can come in, get something to eat, something to drink, visit with one another, catch up with their riders, and then take off. And so I'm looking at these horses, beautiful, magnificent, strong, big horses that also have wings. And these horses would fly in and laugh together, play together. And as I said, you can, you can talk with your heart, you can talk with your mind. And these horses were so excited that I was there. They said, Lori's finally here. She's finally here. Does she know she has a horse? Ah, uh, I've always been kind of intimidated by horses, you know? Um, I didn't grow up on a farm. I don't know anything about them. And so I have a horse. And as I walked over to the stable with Jesus, he wanted to introduce me to my horse. And when I saw her, I already knew her. Push pause. Back when I was pregnant with our oldest daughter, Crystal, my family was just on an outing, Mike, me, my mom and dad, and we walked into this old timey uh, shop and hanging up over these cash registers was a oil painting probably from the 1970s, an oil painting of a white horse. And I, I've never loved horses or anything, but I looked up and I said, oh, it's my horse. That's my horse. I need that picture. So Mike, he looks at me, he looks at the picture and he's like, honey, we don't need that thing. I said, yes, we do. We need it. That's my horse. That's my horse. <laughs> my dad, because I'm pregnant with his first grandchild, he's like, Get her that picture. Well, we get it down. Of course, it's all dusty. That horse picture hangs in my bedroom today. And until I went to the stables the first time, I didn't realize I was a horsewoman. And I met her. Her name is Freedom. I ride a horse named Freedom, and she's beautiful. She's very gentle, very strong very opinionated. She has set her hoofs to follow the Lord. And when I met her and things were coming together, you see, I got that picture back before I was saved. And yet my plan and purpose, God's plan and purpose for my life has always been. And I was like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And Jesus was so happy for me to get a couple things. One, I was introduced to my real horse, freedom. And number two, that his will for my life is so strong that it will take a miracle or a choice to keep me out of God's plan. When I came back out of that vision, I mean, I pondered that for so long. I was so happy. I have the picture of my horse. And now moving forward, the second time I went to heaven, to the stables. So when I got to the stables on the second time, um, things were a little different. Uh, it was way more serious. There were angels in their wings. And what these angels were doing were the angels were directing riders with horses on in flight patterns. And I was supposed to learn how to ride freedom. And so now on the earth, how we do that is we train the horse. You put the bit in its mouth, you have some reins, and you tell the horse what you want it to do. But that is not how it works in heaven. In heaven, the horse trains the rider. There is no bit in its mouth. There is no, no handle to direct its head. This horse understands battle better than we can. And so they helped me up on the horse. I mean, it had a, it had a, a, a saddle, but not the kind of saddle that we're used to. 
and I'm sitting on it. And I had, I had to start as a beginner. I had to learn how to do the just walk and then the little trot. And then the first time that she took off running, I thought we were flying. Not yet. But then when she took off, oh my goodness, freedom can fly like you would not believe. And so she had her flight pattern and I learned how to let my thoughts connect with her thoughts for her to tell me what we were going to do next. You know, we're going to, we're going to move to the left. We're going to move to the right. You know, get ready. We're going to do a loop-de-loop. -loop. And this horse, all the horses in heaven, can go upside down. It's remarkable what these horses can do. And she trained me. She taught me how to fly. Um, she taught me how to hold on. So you have to wrap your hands inside of her mane. And I was worried, I'm going to hurt you. Nope. That's what she wanted. So I just tightly, as tight as I could, held on to her. And the horses like to fly down and like cause the water to spray up. And so they sprays up. It was so much fun. Now in heaven, you can go jump in a lake if you want to, but when you come out, you'll be dry because we leave the water where God put the water. And it's alive. It was so exciting. My horse, me, we were having such a good time. And when that vision ended, I understood how important it is that you study and become good at what God is giving you to do. How important is that? That's why having a walk of faith, believing what God is telling you, and then lining yourself up with it to do your part. That's all you got to do is just your part. He've got his plan. We've got his provision. And the only thing that can keep you out of the will of God is your choice. Because he's not going to change it. And I started realizing I need to know the Bible better. I need to worship with my whole heart. I need to get connected with people who love God more than me. I want iron to sharpen iron. I want to be on the cutting edge of whatever it is that God is doing. I want God to say, hey, there's a new thing that I'm doing and who can show up who's not filled with unbelief? I want to be that girl. And so I did my part. And that's important to understand that with the time that you have, you can't waste it. Freedom only had fun after she had taught me how to ride. You know, I always used to think it'd be okay to just have fun while you're doing it. I don't think that's true anymore. I don't think having fun is a part of the deal. Do the thing and then go have fun. And keep your eye on what it was you were supposed to be doing. Now, there's one more vision of going to the stables. And this one kind of really set in my mind the idea that I am a warrior. And me and my horse have a purpose. And when we come back, please come back. This part will get you ready for when you ride your horse. Welcome back. I'm really excited to be able to share this last uh, stable vision with you. So in this vision, when I arrived in heaven, I was running. I was running. My angel was running alongside of me and my angel was encouraging me, you know, faster. Don't grow weary in this good work. Go faster. And as I came running up the hill, the same hill to the stables that I first met Jesus with those little dogs, I was shocked when I got to the top. There were 
military angels all around. And they were assigning riders to their horse. They were making sure that the rider was equipped, wearing what you needed to wear. And I had been given a tiara. I had been given a, a ring, a ring on this finger. I had been given um, a dress. I had been given beautiful shoes. I had been given a banner. And when I got up there, I put on the things that God had given me. And it, and it wasn't like you had to go to um, a restroom or anything. You just, it was handed to you and it was on. I was given this stuff and in a minute I was fully dressed, but it changed. I was in armor. And I saw freedom and she was dressed in an armor that would keep her invisible. And for as far as you could see, Riders were underneath banners, and I knew the Lord is coming to the earth. The Lord is coming to the earth. There was, there was a quiet like you would not believe. Everyone was waiting. There was this trumpet sound that we were waiting for, and all the horses were getting ready to leave heaven, to fly down here, and there was going to be a mess, a mess. When God comes, there was going to be blood as high as these horses. So much blood on to the horse's tummy. That's how much blood was coming. And we knew this. And the horse had been made ready for battle. And I had been made ready. And each of the, each of the sections of this army had been made ready. And there were there were riders coming in from all over the earth to ride with the Lord. And I knew our time is short and God is coming back. And I wrapped my hands as tightly as I could in freedom's mane. And I thought to myself, if there's ever a day that you need to stay put, you stay put now. And she told me, we're ready for this. This is what she was made for. This is what I am been made for. I have been made in a time that is such a serious time. Eternity is just up ahead. Eternity. God is coming. And what he wrote in this book, we are getting ready to see it happen. It was so frightening. There was no more time. Time as we know it is coming to a close. There is a time when Jesus comes back. Eternity is just up ahead. You need to make today count because you will be held accountable. You need to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You need to get right with God. You need to get trained. You need to be sure that you're doing everything that you need to do. Let's pray. God, get us ready. I want to be ready. I want what I saw to be true for me. And I want that for you. God has made us warriors. I'm sure he's made you a warrior. It's who he makes. Maybe you didn't see yourself as one. Maybe you didn't know that you're supposed to be a warrior. But you are. There are legions and legions of horses in heaven. I'm sure you have one. And you need to be able to ride it. You need to be able to fight in this epic time that's coming. God, help us. Help us be ready. I pray, God, for all of the people who are listening that they would see themselves as a warrior. That God, they would know the times. And that as they feel these times, feel these times inside of their life, God, that they would take the end time serious. Holy Spirit, I ask you, to come and equip us. Make us about our Father's business. 
Help us, God, not waste our time, our energy. That we'd be diligent. Make us diligent to concentrate on the things that matter most. I bless you to do with your resources what Jesus has asked you to do. I bless you that you will be ready. And that in the trainings that he's giving you now, these trainings are preparing you. And just say it with me. I will be ready. I will be ready in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Mm -hmm.